Adventure. Tonight's story by Norman Partington is entitled The Redwood Tree. Well, there it is, straight in the line of sight, unavoidable. Want to take a look, see, through the theater like Mr. Harris? I wouldn't dispute the word of the surveyor, Wilson, but I'd like to see for myself. Now, where's the focusing knob? No, it's already in focus. All you have to do is look through it. Yeah? Yeah, I've got it. Hmm. Just where the shoulder of the road will come. Devil of a size, ain't it? Hey, Fletcher, you seen this? Yeah, I've seen it, Mr. Harris. Not to worry. We'll take it down all right. A day to lop the tops off, and two days for the base cutting, and, well, four days to saw up the carcass and clear it away. It might take a few days to get the roots clear. Seems a pity. That tree must have stood there for hundreds of years. Two thousand years would be a fair estimate, Mr. Uh, Harris. Huh? Uh, so speaks our landscape gardener, eh, Smith? Landscape designer. Though gardener at heart. And I agree with you. It would be a pity for Pity cut... nothing. We got a contract to push this road through Northern California up into Oregon, and no redwood, giant or otherwise, is going to stand in the way. Swish, and down it'll come. Your heart is like your machine, Fletcher, just a metal pump. You see in your path a tree, a redwood, as you call it, but actually a sequoia sempervirens, the oldest living things on Earth, plants where Cleopatra was a little girl. And this particular one looks like the granddaddy of them all. I'd say it's 200 feet high and probably 28 feet in diameter at the base. So right. Then I'll tip my hat to it before I cut it down. Assuming it will let you cut it down. Assuming what? Are you off your nuts, Smith? It's just a tree, isn't it? And we got axes, power saws, bulldozers, dynamite if need be. And what gives? Just two little days and that dear old redwood will be lying prostrate, ready for trimming and carting away. Maybe. <laughs> But the Indians consider it a sacred tree with strange powers. Used to be worshipped at one time. Made a mild objection three days ago, and one of the loggers nearly had his fingers taken off when he was trying out a new accident. Man, you get the nuttiest ideas. It was an accident. You're an Indian too, aren't you, Smith? Four fifths. Plus one fifth enterprising Anglo Saxon. Actually, my ancestors came from around these parts, between Northern California and Oregon. Well, how come Tom Smith? That's no Indian name. Forked tongue of pale face, no get round Indian name. <laughs> Hence, my hey. parents decided that even the Americans would have no difficulty with Tom Smith. Right, that's enough drawing. Let's get moving with a road to build. All right. Fletcher, collect your equipment and start work on that tree. Okay. We should reach that point in two weeks from now. You other two come with me in the trailer caravan. Right, you have. We can manage three at the front. Come on now, let's get going. All right. All right. <laughs> As a surveyor, Wilson, do you think it's possible to make a slight shift to avoid cutting down that tree? Not a chance, Mr. Harris. <laughs> You'd probably need an act of Congress for a couple of inches deviation. I shouldn't let Big Chief Tom Smith worry you too much. This Big Chief isn't worrying. Just dismayed. I think me too. When a tree's been standing there for 2,000 years, well, it seems a crime somehow to think of cutting it down. I never thought I'd hear construction chief Gregor Harris getting sentimental. I heard you once blasted a mountain apart to put a road through. Earth and rocks are not trees. Just pull over there. <clears throat> oh, so long, no. There we are. There it is, Fletcher, in its full glory. How are you going to tackle it? Well, I'll send up a couple of tree jacks, and they'll take the top 50 feet off. And then they'll move down and take off another 50 feet and so on. Lop off 50 feet up there with a tree that thing? <laughs> you know, the trouble with you surveyors is you ain't got no practical sense. Tree jacks don't use axes and something this size. They got portable power saws. We just haul them up at the top, set them in position, and switch on. Takes less time in cutting through than in getting them into position. Mr. Harris, in all seriousness, I wish you would reconsider. 
This kind of tree has a mystique for Indians. They're not going to take its destruction any too kindly. And there's an Indian village near here. Sorry, Smith, but it's got to come down. Go ahead, Fletcher. Right, Mr. Harris. Okay, boys. Get that stuff over here. Right. Uh, you two tree jacks shinny up the tree. You got your spike nose boots on? Yeah. That's good. We'll get up there and make an inspection. Throw down a light cord when you've found a spot, and we'll haul up the power saw. Uh, you just watch that first one, huh? Hold it. Where did you spring from, mister? Hey, there. I don't take kindly to having a shotgun pointed at me. Have no fear. The gun will not be used unless you try to harm that tree. Harm it? What goes on here? Who are you? Are you one of the locals? He's a full-blooded Indian, Mr. Harris. Take him at his word. That tree belongs to us, and you may not harm it. Too many big trees have already been cut down. Our land is bare of them, but this one shall stay. Now, don't try anything crazy. You're not going to risk murder just for the sake of a tree. Now, why don't you put down that gun and push off back to your village and we'll forget we ever saw you? Yeah, the Americans would like to forget they ever saw the Indians. Look around you and see what you have done to our land. Oh, now, this is getting ridiculous. It's like something out of a bad movie. Well, okay, then. If you want to keep it as a bad movie, then we signal for the 7th Cavalry. Smith, get over to my caravan, transmit a call to road headquarters, and ask them to get a squad car up here. Yes, sir. Now, look, it'll be half an hour since we made that call. The police will be here soon. Now, let's settle this thing before they come. Now, you know I've no authority to take the road anywhere except where the plans say. We don't like the idea of cutting down that redwood, but for Pete's sake, it's in our way and it's got to come down. So, are you going to kill me? Take an axe to this tree and you will know the answer to that question, road boss. This tree belongs to my village, my people. It is the last of the... Hey there, Indian boy, take it easy with that gun. What in tarnation goes on here? Policeman, come no closer if you want this boss man to live. You darn fool, you want to commit murder? Well, take a look at my patrol car. Two of my boys got Winchester's aiming straight at you. You'd be dead the minute I give the word. Now be sensible and drop that gun. I do not mind dying, but the boss man here will not like to die. This is crazy. You want to kill somebody just for a tree? Just for a tree. And for a principal. Oh, heck, Mr. Harris. This has got me beat. I, I could have this guy killed with a snap of the fingers, but think of what the press would... Oh, boy, and here they are now. Cameras to the front. Look, hey, 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 you guys, look, get out of here. <laughs> hey, can't you see we got trouble over here? Come, please, just move on. Hey, Smith, while they're distracted, get behind the tree. There's a bullhorn there that Fletcher used to talk to the tree jacks when they're up the tree. Yeah? Switch it on full and, uh, and boom something out. Right. Beat it, you guys. This is a private argument. The police seem to fear the press more than they do the criminals, Mr. Bossman. I don't think that any publicity this gets is going to save that tree or your neck if you use that gun. Oh, hey, right. Hey, I got him. I got him. The grab is gone now. Oh, okay. Hold him down. I'll get the cuffs on it. So, you think that once more a trick has defeated the Indian, but you think wrong. It has defeated only me. The sequoia still stands, and there are no tricks that you know powerful enough to defeat it. Well, take him away. Uh, uh, a few months in jail will cool him down. Thanks, Sergeant. That was a near thing, but uh, I'd rather not press charges against him. Especially now the press have got hold of the story. Oh, you don't need to press charges, Mr. Harris. The police will do that. We can't have gun totten Indians threatening to blow people's heads off each time they cut down a tree. The holy sequoia will defeat you in the end, boss man. You will never cut it down. It has powers you will know about. Leave it before it destroys you all. Smith, that was a bright idea of yours and Wilson's, and I never want to come so close to death again. I just hope you're doing the right thing, Mr. Harris. Now, look, Smith, I'm getting a bit tired of this. Fletcher, get on with the job. Right, Mr. Harris. Okay, you tree jacks, start climbing. Yeah. 
Now, when you get to the top 50 feet, drop your cord to haul up the power saw. Power saw rig? Yeah. Hey, watch those electric cables. Don't twist too much. Uh, drag it over the branch on your left, huh? To your left, right? Is that okay? Yeah. Poor old Sakai. For they are indeed spirits inside you. Now is the time to accept your fate with calm resignation. Saw in position. I'm switching on power now. How long for the first topping, Fletcher? Oh, about half an hour. It's so thick, even up there, they'll have to take three cuts. Out. Redwoods aren't so easy to cut, but we should... Uh... Oh, for... for Pete's sake! Quick, one of the tree jacks! That other tree, Jack, is all right. We got him down. Well, the ambulance should be here soon. Now, let me lace that coffee with a bit of brandy. You look as if you need it. Here, steady on. Your hand's shaking like the devil. Well, I, I just can't believe it, Mr. Harris. I had checked the motor, the dynamo, the, the whole machine. I expected the power cables and the saw. They were perfect. Perfect. I suppose there will be an inquest, Mr. Harris. Yeah, there'll have to be, Wilson. Smith come back yet? Hey, just coming in the caravan now. How'd it go, Smith? I've just been talking to the other tree, Jack. He said there was nothing wrong with the machine. They'd set it up and started sawing. Things were going quite normal when suddenly his mate slapped at his face just as if a wasp had stung his cheeks. It upset his balance and the saw he was holding. Well, it, it slipped down onto the power cable. It had cut through it in a second. It, it shorted. He, he was electrocuted. Dead, even before he fell from the tree. Sequoia seems to have claimed its first victim. I don't talk such rot, Smith. Next thing you'll be claiming there's a juju on it or something. That's what my ancestors have believed for centuries. And it seems it's what the local Indians still believe. You're a man with a college degree, Smith. Surely you don't subscribe to this kind of superstition? You know, Wilson, I'd like to scoff and put it down as so much primitive nonsense. But that four-fifths Indian blood in me warns me otherwise. Do you realize what that sequoia's cost us so far? Yeah. One man with a finger lopped off. Another man dead. An Indian facing several months in jail. Three thousand dollars in broken equipment. Two days lost work. Don't you think I'd be justified? No, you wouldn't. You'd simply be fired and return and another construction boss would come in on the job and rip out the tree. You'd be cutting your own throat for nothing. I know. We're having another go at it in the morning. Fletcher decided to abandon the technique of topping, and he's going to attack the base of the trunk direct. I've moved up the big band saw, Mr. Harris. It's going to be a long job to get through 28 feet. We're making four cuts, one from each side, because no band saw could ever get through that thickness with one cut. I uh, won't ask if you've checked the equipment, Fletcher. Checked and double-checked. There isn't a screw on the big machine I have on examine. All right. Go ahead. Generator, start up. Well, that's working all right. Start up tractor motor. Raise saw blade to height of six feet. Right. Now, take it easy now. Tractor move forward to take first bite. Slowly. Easy does it. All right, pressure on saw. Into tree. Well, it seems to be biting all right. How long do you think, Fletcher? An hour? An hour. Huh. More like three hours for the first cut. And then we'll move all the equipment to the side. Hammer in wedges and start the second cut. Sawing and it's only cut in nine inches. Sequoia's hard work, Wilson. Harder not, Smith. These band saws will cut through them. I've even tried them on lignum vitae, the hardest wood in the world. And you know. Cut the power! Cut the power! Shut them! Mr. Harris, I beg you. It's claimed its third victim. That band so cut through jumps on the operator. I saw it, Smith. You needn't go into details. I apologize. 
But as the man responsible for redesigning the landscape adjacent to the road, I could easily make a feature of the tree if you'd only deviate a mere 80 feet to the west. And at this stage, that's not impossible. Darn you, no! Fletcher! Yes, Mr. Harris? Is the ambulance gone? Yeah, a few minutes ago. But what in tarnation caused that accident? Smith will probably say the tree's evil spirits. But the real cause was a fluke. When the tree jack was electrocuted and fell down from the top... You know those long metal spikes they wear in the toes of their boots? Well, in falling, this was jammed into the base of the tree and torn off. It wasn't noticed because it had happened after I'd made my first inspection of the tree trunk. And when the bandsaw cut into it, zing! A blade snapped and whipped around on the operator. Can't you see the omens, Mr. Harris? The last time, keep your darn mouth shut, Smith! Fletcher, I want that tree down tomorrow. Blast the base of it with dynamite and blow it over. Ouch. I'm going to need about 15 sticks, Mr. Harris. And I will have to notify the police and get them to clear the immediate area. Then notify the police and get the dynamite prepared. A ring explosion around the trunk will kill once and for all Smith's superstitions. Hey. Hey. Hey, what goes on out the there? Forty of them at least. Women and children as well, all patiently sitting in a ring around the tree. Must have taken up positions before John broke. Oh, heavens not again. I just couldn't face it. <sighs> I'd better notify the police and have, have them shoo them away. Yeah, that coffee, Wilson. Yeah. Nip a brandy in it, please. Yeah, that other Indian was a tough one. But I got a feeling this is going to be tougher. Why? They're not armed, are they? Well, not so far as I can see. Yeah, let me borrow your binoculars. Huh? Here. Thanks. No, the... They ain't armed. About four men and the rest women and children. Just sitting there impassively all around the tree. Hey! Hey, you know something? Four cars of reporters drawing up. TV news cameras oh, as well. Oh, no. What have I done to deserve this? All I want to do is get on with my job and build a road. Oh, wait till I get my pants on and I go out and have a powwow with them. Oh, you better get on the radio telephone and notify headquarters. It'll have to be the blasted police again. All right, all right, Smith. I know what you're going to tell me. I've seen your red Indians on the ruddy warpath. I'm just setting up my Gatling gun. It's more serious than you imagine, Mr. Harris. Now, look, Smith. In a few minutes, the police will be here, and your dear red Indian squaws and whatever will be gently moved on. Nobody's going to hurt them. We are not going to hurt them. But they're going to hurt themselves to save that tree. Oh, boulder dash. If they don't go when they're told to, the police will just pick them up and gently move them away. Come outside, Mr. Harrison. Bring your binoculars with you. Uh, let me tie my boots first. How do you see her, Mr. Harris? No, not yet. There's some leaves and branches. Yeah, yeah, there she is. Halfway up the tree. Now focus very sharply and tell me what you see. Huh? I see a young woman. An Indian woman, she looks like. They're standing on a branch halfway up the sequoia. She's got a... Smith! What the heck? Now you can see her quite clearly. There's a rope around a branch above her. she got a noose, a noose around her neck. She's not dead. No. She's not dead. But with the slightest movement, she soon would be. Oh, they're crazy, the whole lot of them. I've been up to them. And they won't say a word to me. They, they just sit there looking into space. They all speak English, don't they, Smith? Of course. The national language of America. Didn't you know, Mr. Harris? Now, don't be flippant, Smith. Now, look. Do you still speak their local lingo? Yeah, quite fluently. Are you deputizing me to... To powwow with them? Yeah, and don't be so darn smart. See what gives. And tell them to get that woman down. Wilson, uh, do you think we uh, ought to summon a fire brigade or something? It'd take half an hour for the nearest one to get here, and that woman only needs half a second to walk into space and into eternity. Now it's up to Smith to see what he can do. Try to keep back the reporters and photographers, Mr. Harris. And I'll go alone to them. I'll try to persuade them. But knowing my people, they won't be persuaded. Not again, Mr. Harris. 
please, not again. My great-granddaddy fought in the Indian Wars, but I thought we'd smoked the pipe of peace since then. Here's the binocular, Sergeant. Here, take a look. Halfway up the tree. All right. Good morning, Sergeant. Mr. Harris, I've had a word with the leader of them. And we have two options. Go on. First, we take our road round the tree and leave the sequoia untouched. On the second? That we move on them and on the tree, and the young woman will step into space and and hang herself. Man, if she did that, we could never get up that tree fast enough to save her. True. They know it. Did they tie her up there? No. She climbed up quite willingly. You can see she's not tied up. Just the noose loosely around her neck. A woman willing to commit suicide for... For a tree that means something to the people. And the woman, incidentally, is the wife of the Indian you arrested. She feels she has nothing to lose except her life. There's about 40 cameras up there focused on the tree. And they got two television crews. Well, Mr. Harris, the ball's in your court. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Sergeant. I'm going to order you to shift those people, and then I'm going to blast that tree down. And then now hold on there, Mr. Harris. This thing's kind of getting over my head. I, I, I think I'm going to have to report back to the station and get some clearance before I start making rushes on them Indians. I ain't hankering to have a suicide on my conscience. The sequoia is now out for blood, Mr. Harris. If you mention that kind of pulp again, Smith... I'll just about strangle you. It will be unnecessary, Mr. Harris. For the person your actions are about to strangle already has a noose about her neck. Use some sense, Harris, and some humanity. Sergeant, remove those people. I've got a job to do. Then let the responsibility be on your head, Mr. Harris. Come on, boys, move on the rails. Uh, that's the radio telephone. I'll answer it. Yeah, Wilson here. The surveyor. No, he's just left. What? They who? Hold on, I'll try and get him. Hey, Mr. Harris, urgent. Is the governor around the telephone? Coming. Yes, sir. Harris here. Yes, sir. No, we were going to... Yeah, she's still in the tree. No, we haven't... Yet... Yes, sir, I understand. Yes, sir, right away. About a hundred feet west. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Smith! Sergeant! Hold everything! Hold it! Sergeant! Here's the loud hailer, Mr. Harris. Smith! Sergeant! Stop! Don't do anything! The governor has told us to divert the road. The tree will be left alone. Smith, tell them that. The tree will be left alone. That was a mere squeak. The police had started moving forward when we heard you. The girl, did they get her down safely? She's down. And she's safe, Mr. Harris. And you told her? Yeah, I told her that the governor had ordered her husband to be freed and that no charges would be pressed. Wow, I must have been out of my mind. Anyway, let's get this road built. <laughs> I must admit, Smith, that sequoia's got some pretty powerful spirits looking after it. Plus one four-fifths Indian with crest enough to alert the state governor. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.